This is Larry London for The Voice of America, and uh, it's not often that you have an icon uh, sitting across from you. Well, a legend, icon, a woman who has inspired millions all around the world. We'd like to welcome to The Voice of America in Washington, the Queen, Aretha Franklin. Thank you so much. It's wonderful to have you in our studios here in D.C., and uh, I know you're on tour right now, and I keep hearing the tour is going fantastic. It's a kind of little mini tour. I don't go on real tours anymore, not extended tours. I mean that to say extended. Mm -hmm. uh, just mini tours, select dates here and there, select. Uh, I call it Good Sense Touring. <laughs> and you're promoting a Christmas album, your yes, first I'm ever Christmas album. Yes, I'm promoting my Christmas album here in Washington. I was at Borders Books uh, this afternoon, as you know, and it was just fabulous. The turnout was fabulous. And uh, I um, signed a number of, um, of my Christmas albums produced by Tina Clark, myself, and uh, one or two other producers um, who I'll talk to you about a little later. But it's my first ever Christmas album. It's exclusively in Borders and Walden Books. And uh, I am just thrilled with it. I am really thrilled with it. Now, what made you decide now to do a Christmas album at this point? Well, because my contract um, expired with uh, Jay, I decided not to renew with them. Clive wanted me to stay. I wanted to stay, but we just could not come to a meeting of the minds about certain things. So I decided to um, to uh, entertain some other offers that were made to me and uh, I decided to sign with one of the companies and we decided to do this Christmas album because the chairman of the board, unfortunately Jerry Wexler at Atlantic, Clive Davis at uh, Jay and Arista, just never thought that a Christmas album was that important, and I always did. So uh, now is the time to do it. That's right. That's right. Uh -huh. Coming up on the holiday season, and I know that faith has always been a very large part of your life. Mm -hmm. uh, you grew up. Your father, uh, mm -hmm. you know, was a, a reverend in, mm -hmm. in his own church, and of course, you you sang gospel music when you first started. That's right. Mm -hmm. and, I and, traveled with him uh, for many years. And you released a gospel album a, a few years back as well. I did album. on the Chess label. That's mm -hmm. right. Uh, when I was fourteen. Wow. A few years ago, not that years. long. Just so, a few I mean, years if you ago. weren't making music, what do you think you'd be doing? If I weren't making music, what would I be doing? Well, I had uh, thought of being um, a Florence Nightingale. My mother was a nurse, and so I considered that. And uh, executive secretary, I considered that. And uh, a prima ballerina. Ballet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Yes, I uh, took some classes in New York over at the uh, East, uh, the um, on Madison Avenue, the Academy of Ballet. Mm -hmm. And uh, Arthur Mitchell had some classes with myself, and he uh, gave me some moves that I was having a little trouble with at the Academy, <laughs> and I learned them just like that. No, it's wonderful. I'm glad mm -hmm. that you did get into music. There's so many people who have been touched by your, your music over the years. Mm. I was looking, and you have 20 Grammys. Uh, mm -hmm. that, that's just, it's unfathomable to have 20 Grammys that for one wonderful. person. That is wonderful. It is wonderful. It's a wonderful feeling. I, I mean, yeah. do you does any one stand out more than another in your mind? I mean, was there one in particular that... No, they all just felt wonderful uh, being uh, receiving each of them. Um, mm -hmm. Who is it? Um, the Pink Panther. You know who I mean? Uh, the producer. Of the song? Of the Pink Panther. Mancini? The Mancini. Mancini mm -hmm. has 24. Well, but you're the queen. <laughs> all right. You're okay. all that matters. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Aretha Franklin's our guest here on The Voice of America. We were talking about her Christmas album, and I understand you play piano on the new Christmas album. I do. I play it on several cuts, and um, next year I'm going to invest more time in my piano. Everyone always tells me how much they enjoy my piano, so I'm going to invest more time in it. I went to New York this uh, past summer in August. I stayed there all month. And uh, I took some classical piano uh, classes.
from a young lady who started her own school who was a student of Juilliard, and that is the technique that uh, I wanted, and so I've started. And you're going to hear a different piano from here on. I'll tell you, the, you know... The same and different. Well, one of the most wonderful moments that I have in my life was watching you in 1998 on the Grammys, as far as music goes, mm -hmm. to see you come on stage and at the last minute, I understand, fill in for... Pavarotti, who was mm. very ill, mm -hmm. and I still, and I'm, I'm not kidding when I say this, I have in my iPod uh, Nessun Dorme that really? you say. Yes. Wonderful. And I listen every morning while I'm exercising to you. To you. Really? That inspires me. Okay. And that was, you inspired so many, and everybody gave you a standing ovation, and that was wonderful how you hit all the notes. It, it was, was a wonderful night. What a night. With two standing ovations that night, what a night. I'll always remember that. Well, you probably also have more standing ovations than anybody else in the industry, I'm sure, as well. Yeah, I wouldn't say that, <laughs> but um, I've had a few. <laughs> and, and recently you were honored by uh, NAACP with a mm -hmm. Vanguard honor. Yes, and that's true. The honors just keep coming in for you. Uh, wonderful. Mr. Julian Bond, a longtime uh, civil rights man, wonderful man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I was asked to, uh, you know, one of our listeners, when I mentioned that you were going to be on, they wanted to know, because they're also from, like we are, from Detroit. Mm -hmm. And they said that there's a council woman there, Martha Reeves, who was in the music business. Mm -hmm. and she's now behind some proposal for artists to be paid for their music to be played on the radio. Mm. And that's a very big issue right now. Artists do get paid for their music being played on the radio. Okay. You get mechanical rights. Right, as composers and authors. Yes. But as performers, uh, okay. a lot of the Now that are... I was not aware of. Mm. Okay. So I didn't know if you uh, knew that bill. As, or... Okay, as a performer. No, I wasn't aware of that. Mm -mm. That must be kind of, re uh, it's recent, right? Yes, yes, okay. in the last year or two. Okay. And I know that Martha Reeves is behind that mm -hmm. from Detroit, so I thought since we're both from Detroit mm -hmm. that I'd ask if you were involved in that. Or I missed that, that one. You missed that one. Mm -hmm. uh, the album uh, duets you know, with the Queen that mm -hmm. you put out last mm -hmm. year, mm -hmm. you worked with so many tremendously talented people from music today uh, a fabulous collection how do you pick who you're going to perform with who you're going to record with over the years you've done george michael and and elton john mm -hmm. and the list goes on mm -hmm. how do you pick these these artists to collaborate with well a lot of times um uh, clive would bring things to me sometimes the artist themselves uh, will call or it's someone that i would like to record with so uh, it can happen either one of those ways. Mm. Is there anybody that you haven't worked with yet that you would still like to? I would love to do something with Smokey and love to do something with Stevie. And uh, I very much wanted to do something with Oscar Peterson, but unfortunately he passed. Uh, God bless. And um, I'd love to do something with Herbie Hancock. Mm. And uh, I have a favorite... Um, a uh, gentleman on the sax, his name escapes me right now, but he is so good. He is so good. Uh, Herbie knows who he is. Mm, well, there's tr tremendously talented sax players. You know, mm -hmm. Gerald Albright is, is one. Is, yeah, Gerald Al Albright is terrific. Yeah, there's He's a lot very of good. Now, of all the people you've worked with, do you have a favorite time or moment or song? It's hard to pick, probably. It's, yeah. So there, many there, babies. There have been so many. Uh, <laughs> It's hard. It would be hard to say. Mm. Now, talking about babies, mm -hmm. you have a couple of children mm -hmm. uh, who are music-oriented, musically-oriented. Mm -hmm. um, Teddy, I went to school with. Right. Who we performs were just in talking your band. about that. Right. Oak Park High. Right, right, right. Okay. And uh, my other son, Kelf, uh, is a producer on an album that's forthcoming out in the spring of 09, uh, Aretha, A Woman Falling Out of Love. And uh, Kelf did something on that album. Eddie is singing, uh, and he travels with me, my other son, Eddie. Uh, he's a writer, and they are up uh, until midnight and, and in the wee hours of the morning making tracks, and he and his musical partner. So uh, yeah, everybody's in the game. And you got your sons on the Christmas album. Yes, and Eddie is also singing, that's right, oh, that's uh, this Christmas with me. That's on great. the Christmas album, along with Silent Night and 14 Angels, something that I learned as a child that has stayed with me all of these years from the opera Hansel and Gretel. And um, there's so many good things on there. You just have to hear it. Now, how do you pick the songs for a Christmas album? I mean, you've, your career is four decades long, mm. and now you decide, I'm going to do a Christmas album, and mm -hmm. there's so many great Christmas songs. Mm -hmm. It must have been a difficult 
Well, I had to do the traditional things mm -hmm. like Silent Night and um, Angels We Have Heard on High. That's my favorite. That is my favorite. And um, uh, Ave Maria is on there. Uh, what is the other one? Um, Hark the Herald Angel Sing. That's another one of my favorites. Uh, those two I particularly just love. And uh, the one with Eddie, my son, this Christmas. And Christmas just ain't Christmas without the one you love. The OJs, that was, that was so terrific. It's, it's, that's um, every Christmas, that's the first record that's played in the house. Wow. Yeah. What are you going to be doing this Christmas? What will happen in, besides Christmas, listening to the OJs? Uh, this Christmas, <laughs> I'm going to play mine first and then play theirs, probably. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, you ladies know. Ladies before gentlemen. That's right. Always ladies first. Yeah. And the queen first. And I understand, you know, it's an interesting to me to find out, you know, I was told that you don't like airplanes. I don't like airplanes either. Mm -hmm. um, but yet, you're such a celebrity all around the world. How do you end up, how do you get to perform in international countries? Well, now countries? I have a custom bus, and um, I just go, go any and everywhere I want to, with the exception of over to Europe mm -hmm. on my custom bus. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it's not one of those amphibious buses, <laughs> but... Yeah, we're working on it. Uh, no, in a couple of weeks, I'm going to take my first flight uh, in many years. In a couple of weeks. Really? Yeah. Whoa. Mm -hmm. I've got a great support group. Uh -huh. And uh, after that, if I don't want to fly anymore, I won't. Right. I right. flew for 23 years. Uh -huh. Oh, so, I mean, as far as international touring, you must do limited dates then. Yes. And how do you get... To those places, because I get a lot of email for your music. I, I you yeah. know, I get from Japan, uh -huh. from Asia. Uh -huh. You know, we're on in Africa. Okay, well, I haven't been to Europe since '83, mm -hmm. and I uh, have not gone out of the state since '83. Um, that's one of the reasons I want to do this flight in a couple of weeks because I do want to go back to Europe very, very much. Love to go back to Paris. I would love to go back to London and uh, to many of the places that I did go when I was flying. And then to some of the places that I didn't get a chance to go, like uh, Frankfurt, Germany, and um, Denmark, I didn't get a chance to go to. Um, Israel, um, Abu Dhabi, you know, places like that. How about the Middle East, you know, places where the troops are? I mean, I get a lot mm -hmm. of email. I would love to perform and sing for the troops. I hope that I'll be asked to. Oh, I'm sh hey, they're going to be asked now. Okay. They've just heard about it. I would love to. <laughs> I would love to. Now, uh, you know, as far as the, the audiences around the world, when you have performed, you know, in different places around mm -hmm. the world, what's the feeling for you like when you're on stage in a country perhaps like Japan? You've probably been to Japan a number of times. I have not been to Japan. Nope. No, never have. Um, the flight is, it's, it's a long way yeah, to Japan. Hours. It's kind of like uh, Rio was, about 15 hours as well. Mm. I was on my way to Rio at one point, and I was just really dreading the flight because it's so long, I didn't want to be in the air that long. And uh, the promoter called and said he was going to reschedule, and I said, thank God. You know, I'd love to go to Rio, but it's just so far. Hmm. Now, when you are in a country performing where they don't speak English as a first language, and yet they know all the words to Aretha Franklin's music, how does mm -hmm. that make you feel? Wonderful. Uh, many times they don't know the words in English or in their language, but they're enjoying it. And you can just, you can see it in their expressions and their movement. They're still enjoying it. So it just transcends the lyric and it transcends uh, the music. And now you're touring with a full orchestra, eleven piece, I believe. Uh, well, I don't. 12? I don't tour with a full orchestra. My concert, mm -hmm. uh, we have about twenty six pieces. Yeah, uh, carrying that many people, you would be broke. Right. Uh, at this point <laughs> in my career, you'd be broke for sure. No, I, I carry a rhythm section and uh, four singers, mm -hmm. and uh, the usual staff, secretary, administrative assistant, security people, and that's about it. Mm. Does it feel like it's been four decades for you? Do you no. ever wake up, sit, and think, my God, it was just yesterday? No, no. has it been four decades? <laughs> I, well, I can't believe it looking at you, how beautiful no, you look, but it's you. been, you know, I mean, it's, we're talking the 60s, uh -huh, that, that, you know, uh, uh -huh. respect, and, yeah. and the first two Grammys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it doesn't feel like it's been that long. Just no. overnight? No. Well, I was just a tyke when I started. 
Mm -hmm. So if you knew then what you know now, Uh would you have still gotten into music? It's kind of a two-part question. Would you still gotten into music, and would you do anything differently? No question about it. Would you do anything differently? uh, was meant for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Would you do anything differently? I wouldn't be doing anything else Mm -hmm. except what I'm doing right now. Because a lot of the artists, you know, that have gone through the different processes of the business know that it's such a business now. You know, that mm. when you got into it initially, it was more about creativity and about artistic freedom and expressionism. But now it's become a business. Well, it was for me. Mm-hmm. And it was a business for some other people when I got into it. Mm. It wasn't a business for me. It should have been. But I was quite naive and very naive at 17. And it was a business for some other people. And, of course, after people pay their taxes with your money a few times, you wake up and you learn the business. No, you weren't kidding you know, after, about that. After getting the business <laughs> right. a few times. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, you have obviously made a significant impact into music. Is there one moment that stands out in your mind above other moments as being kind of a defining point for Aretha Franklin? You said, you know, that you were satisfied, mm. that you finally looked in the mirror and said, you know, I've arrived. Hmm. I think, well, to begin with, when you make the cover of the jet, you've arrived for me uh, coming up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, at coming up. When you make the cover of the jet, you have arrived. Mm. Yeah. Well, you, you're, uh, you know, I guess Billboard named you one of the top 20 most influential artists of all time. Yes, yes. Rolling Stone in 2004, you were in the top yes, five, yes, yes. you know, most influential, powerful mm-hmm, artists of mm-hmm. all time. And of course, later on, uh, as a more mature adult, you realize the importance of Billboard and, and, uh, Playboy and, and these other various industry magazines, um, that are really important. What kind of advice would you give to somebody who's starting now? What kind of advice would I give to someone starting now? I would tell, it's the same, it's the same thing that it's always been. Get the diploma, get the paper behind you, because, um, Getting in the music industry is not a picnic. It's not going to be a picnic. A few artists become stars overnight and uh, don't become a star. Always maintain, uh, rather, yeah, maintain your, um, your natural beauty, whatever it is you have to offer as a person. Maintain that. Don't become a star and you'll be all right. Yeah. As hard as you've had to work for the thing. And surround yourself with profe- the best professional names in the industry, accountants, lawyers, um, managers, uh, but get someone who will work with you because the expense uh, aspect of the picture is so extreme and it's, it's, so, it's so high. After you finish paying taxes, if you don't have someone working with you, you're going to wind up with Absolutely nothing, you know, by the time you get through paying out what you have to in your expenses alone. You keep hearing stories about people who've hired managers that... That ran off with the money yeah. and absconded with the money. Made some bad sure. choices. Yes. Accountants you trust too. people. And, Accountants too. Yeah. So you have to be very careful uh, who you select. Uh, respect, uh, I'm sorry, select a respected name, someone with a with uh, a reputation for having integrity and principles. Mm, respect. There's that word. Yeah. R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Yes. <laughs> now, you're, you we're talking about, you know, advice to newcomers and whatnot. You've had to work very hard to achieve the success that you have. So how do you feel when you sit and you watch American Idol? I mean, mm. you sit and watch that show. I mean, what are the mm-hmm. thoughts that come to your mind? Is it I something like good? I like American Idol. Do it you? was one of my favorite shows. I like it. Uh, and especially since they were singing a lot of my music. I particularly like it. Uh, great show, though. Great mm. show. I just, um, I thought it was kind of a little unfair, though, that, that some artists are made overnight on that show. Like, overnight, they're stars, and they're catapulted into uh, an industry which they really don't know anything about. And I think that it is, it's, to their advantage and it's to their disadvantage. I really do like the way that I came along little by little and I wasn't thrust into something before 
I could learn what it was I was doing, learn and hone my craft, slowly learn this industry without being shot right out into the stratosphere. You're a star, you're a superstar, and and uh, uh, people uh, are calling and they're pulling on you this way and pulling on you that way. You know, they, um, some of them I'm sure don't know whether they're coming or going. So in a way I thought it was a little unfair and and um, when you turn the coin over, I liked the way that I came along and I, and I took my time and I, it was all very gradual and not overwhelming for me. Mm. So there you have it. Yeah, now it seems like artists are a product and there's not much longevity. Yeah, you know? Yes. In your day, for I some mean, there is. They cultivated the look and everything. Yes, uh huh. Uh, yeah, for some it will be, mm -hmm. and for others it won't be. Now, hopefully, you'll be a mentor on American Idol. That would be a wonderful. I to would have love you on. to. I yeah. would love to, but I I just can't seem to get a call from American Idol. I've called them a few times and they haven't returned my call. Simon, what's the matter with you? I don't know. He's <laughs> being a nasty guy. <laughs> you got to call the Queen of Soul now. I wanted to know when's the first time that you heard anybody call you the Queen of Soul, and and I mean that name has been with you. I for... think out in Chicago um, when I first. Um, started appearing at the Regal Theater, and during that time was when uh, Barry was just launching Motown and some of the other artists that performed with me during that time were uh, the Contours, the Marvelettes, the Temptations, um, and we were only like 17, 18 years old, but we were all coming along together. And uh, the gentleman that that uh, produced those shows, Purvis Span. They used to call him Purvis Span, the blues man. Radio station WVON out of Chicago is the person that um, brought the crown on stage one evening and uh, just announced that, but he announced it after the downbeat poll, the Playboy polls. I had won those polls. And uh, Leonard Feather, who was a very noted uh, critic at the time uh, announced that as well. So it was about the same time mm -hmm. uh, that he did that, and that's where that came from. Now, I grew up in Detroit, and mm -hmm. uh, I remember on the radio it was Martha Jean the Queen. I used to call her and say, there's, no, there's only one Steinberg. queen in Detroit. That's, <laughs> that's a, there's only one queen in Detroit. Right, Martha Jean Steinberg. <laughs> and okay. that's Aretha Franklin, who's, uh, who's our guest here today on The Voice of America, and I'm, I'm just in awe as I sit here uh, and I talk to you and look at you. I mean... I've been listening to your music, you know, ever since I was a little kid, and, and uh, you look beautiful. You, Thank you. you. Look, I mean, I don't know what the secret is. I, I want to find out that secret. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you do. You. you look great. Well, I started very young. Yeah, well, you're still young. Young yeah. at heart, and I yeah. think that's the key. And I am, and you're right. Now, what is the best advice you ever got, and who gave it to you? The best advice that best I advice ever got? Best advice you ever got, because you've worked oh, with I've them all. I've got a lot of good <laughs> yeah. advice. But... Um, I think, um, hmm, let me think about that one. I'll come back to it. Okay, another okay. tough question for All you. Right. When they make the Aretha Franklin story, mm -hmm. who do you want to play Aretha Franklin? I don't know. We've been trying to figure that out for a good little while now. Um, usually when you find the actress that you, you, like a Halle Berry, she's not a singer. Uh, or if you find a Fantasia, she doesn't have the Oscar like Halle Berry does for acting. She doesn't have the same credentials. So usually when you find one, you can't find the other. That's what makes it so hard. Mm. So um, we're still looking, and we'll find just the right person. Jennifer uh, Hudson? Maybe. We met for tea. Um, we'll see. Have you, we'll you I, I read somewhere that you have actually dined with uh, the Queen of England. Is that true? You... No, but I have a, um, I have a standing invitation to have tea at the Queen's Tea Party. Fantastic. Yes. I'm sure you're, you're welcomed by all royalty around the world. I am. If you just accept um, the invitations. <laughs> well, I've been fortunate in getting royal invitations. So um, I can't wait to get back to London to go to the palace. I passed there nightly when when uh, I was flying. This was back in '82, and uh, we did the uh, royal variety show, and um, Prince Charles and Lady Di were there, and 
Uh, I used to pass the palace on the way to the concert nightly. So I can't wait to get back to London. I did get an invitation to do the Queen's Silver Jubilee several years, but at that point I'd stopped flying and I was I was so disappointed. I really was. Well, just I've got to ask you because it's come up a couple of times. Why did you stop flying? What made you change? I just had a very bad flight, mm -hmm. and uh, one of those little two-engine planes. I didn't know that you really shouldn't fly those planes. You stay on the jets. You ride the jets. Don't fly those planes. No one told me that, and uh, I was in a hurry to get home from Atlanta in '83, and uh, they said, "Well, this is all that's available." I said, "Well, we'll take that." You know, a plane is a plane. What's the difference? Uh, no one told me. Mm. And uh, what a time we had coming home. I imagine. So at that point, I, I knew why the Pope kissed the ground. I said, okay, I understand what that's about now. And you're going to stay in uh, the When ground. I get to Metropolitan <laughs> Airport, right. I'm going to kiss the ground there, <laughs> and I'm not getting back on. And since then, I haven't. But at this point, I'm ready to get back on. I'm, I'm ready. I'm sure a lot of people around the world are happy to hear that because yeah. that means that they'll have a chance to see you in person. And, and I'll and have a chance to visit their wonderful countries and see some of the areas that uh, I've always looked at on the Travel Channel that I didn't go to and uh, to dine in Austria and Vienna and things like that. I'm really looking forward to that. Who was the greatest influence in your life? The greatest influence, your dad? Uh, perhaps, perhaps, yes. My mentors, uh, Clara Ward and Reverend James Cleveland, as well as my dad, uh, Art Tatum, pianist, genius pianist, and uh, Oscar Peterson, genius pianist, and Horowitz I loved. Hmm. Do you write a lot of music yourself? Do you... I have. In, uh, back in the day, as they say, back in the day at Atlantic, I wrote a lot of my things then. Hmm. I'm writing less. I decided uh, just a day or so ago, you've stopped writing. You need to start writing more. Start writing again. So I'm going to start writing again. Is that, I mean, that's on your to-do list. What else is on the uh, to-do list? What other things to -do are you... To-do list. To-do. Let's see. I'm going to a conference in uh, New York when we get over there with um, Juanita Bynum, Dr. Juanita Bynum, and Star Jones, and um, what's his name? Um, he is a contributor to CNN, uh, Martin, uh, Roland Martin. It's part of this uh, conference, uh, business conference, how to's, how to make $10 trillion. So I'm going to this conference really just to say hello and just to see what they have to say. And you'll tell them how to make $10 trillion. <laughs> 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 now, uh, the Queen of Soul, Aretha Franklin, is our guest on The Voice of America. And, uh, well, I should call you Dr. Queen, I guess, because you've been a doctorate twice. You were given uh, a doctorate. I have on... six doctorates. Oh, six doctorates. Uh -huh. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I mean, did you ever imagine that that would ever, you know, that you'd be from Berkeley School of Music, you'd be Dr. Franklin? That's right, or Wayne, or Bethune Cookman. University uh, of Detroit? Yes, or, or yes, that's right, UD, that's mm. correct. No, I didn't. But those are wonderful surprises along the way. You never, never know what, what the Lord has in store for you. Mm. Besides music, what other passions in Aretha Franklin's life, besides your children and your family, I know mm -hmm, that's very important mm -hmm. to you, what other things you like to do? Hobbies. All sorts of things. I love tennis. We just went out to the U.S. Open and uh, watched a couple of matches this summer. I didn't get a chance to play any, but uh, got a chance to say hello to Billie Jean and meet her. <coughs> and I love that match between she and uh, Bobby Riggs. Oh, yes. Oh, that was super. Battle of the Sexes. Yeah, yeah and I yeah. just saw her on uh, Oprah just um, a few days ago. Mm -hmm. She and Gloria Steinem and a number of other wonderful women. Um, what else? Cooking, certainly. Mm -hmm. Music, forever. Uh, I still love to travel. Mm -hmm. And uh, I love the dance, the prima ballerina, um, Arthur's Company, uh, Alvin Ailey, the Joffrey Ballet. I love all of those companies. Um, let's see, what else? Um, I, I had a beautiful invitation to come to the Metropolitan Opera and uh, for the opening season, I think, uh, what is her name? Um, wonderful singer, uh, I just can't think of her name right now. 
But unfortunately, I'm going to miss that. I won't be able to uh, to hear her. Hmm. Uh, have you thought about writing a book? A book, yes. I had my memoirs about 10 years ago, and I'm just going to pick up where I left off and do a continuation of my memoirs. Hmm. That's probably your publisher. It is. Uh, <laughs> yes, this is my publisher, publisher calling, calling right, right now. now. <laughs> <laughs> That's my phone. This is on the Christmas album. This is how it starts. Oh, well, are we going to get a concert? Okay. <laughs> we got music. <laughs> okay. That's wonderful. That's a yeah. great ring. Okay. <laughs> what is her name? Um, she's a great singer. Uh, she sings a lot on the Kennedy Center Honors. They have her a lot. Hmm. Uh, I just can't think of her name right now. I really wanted to hear that. Mm. Mm-hmm. And you're gonna. When is your memoir part two gonna be published? Part you two. Think? It's. Uh, we'll we'll start probably in February, mm -hmm. and so I think by September it will be ready for the market. That's fantastic. How about mm -hmm. acting? I mean, we all know you from the Blues acting, Brothers. Acting. Yeah, you've I been had in a, a, quite a number of other I films and TV shows. I had a couple of nice things. The Blues Brothers, Room 222. Mm -hmm. I'm really looking for something very meaty, something really meaty, a very strong supporting part or a starring part. <coughs> Pardon me. What kind of, what would you like to do? You know, Maybe a, I like uh, uh, the dramatic comedy. Maybe some things like Doris Day, the things that she did, I liked a lot. Mm -hmm. That kind of thing. Or it could be uh, autobiographical. It could be that. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be almost anything really good. How about stage? Broadway? Broadway. I would love to do Broadway. And I've had many offers to do Broadway. But um, uh, their scheduling... And how I work are just not compatible. We're just not. So if you ever see me on Broadway, you will know that a new standard has been set. Okay? <laughs> and what about, uh, I mean, you're great on stage and great in film, uh, and you've done Blues Brothers now, and mm -hmm. you, I mean, so musicals. That's kind of where you want to stay in the musical genre. Mm -hmm. You want to do something singing, not, not any dramatic acting. I do. I don't want to play myself. Mm -hmm. I'd like to, to uh, play a character. Mm. Yeah. Now, tell me about your, your personality uh, off stage and out of the limelight. Are you kind of reserved, quiet? Are you a perfectionist? Is this a jigsaw puzzle or what? <laughs> We're trying to put together Yeah, I know. Franklin. What's really going on here? <laughs> do you have the puzzle? Is the puzzle coming together here? <laughs> uh, what? Okay. Go I want ahead. to know more about you. All Our right. listeners want to, you know, it's, it's not often we get a chance to... There's not a lot left to know. <laughs> there's not a lot left to know. No? No. Well, you seem like a, a such a down-to-earth person who, you know, I mean, to have established what you've established. Mm -hmm. And you're so friendly, warm, and approachable. Um, I think, you know, diva, when I hear that word diva, when you hear the word diva, what, what comes to your mind? Um, <laughs> diva... Um, one who is very grand, um, one who, is, who has major credentials, um, uh, who has sometimes been called uh, difficult, uh, that kind of thing, I think, uh, prima donna, that kind of thing, um, I suppose I could be that, but only when it's when one is being unfair to me, and then I could do another number. Mm -hmm. But um, I prefer just to be who I am and uh, just do my thing, and like as I said, not become a star. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you are uh, you know a very sweet person. I can I can tell. I can Thank see. You. No, I, you know, and I, I'm just curious the shows when when people come to see Aretha Franklin in concert with the orchestra. What what kind of things? You're not going to dance ballet, but uh, mm, what are the kinds no. of things you would do? Would you for... like to see me do a pirouette? I would love to see it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, in Lair? Uh, okay. Um, What's the show? Is it the like show, an hour, the concert? I'm and... doing all of the hits, mm -hmm. doing uh, some new things, mm -hmm. some things that, <laughs> pardon you. me, have been at the top of the charts. Mm -hmm. Little Touch My Body, Mariah. 
the Christmas things, a lot of things from the new Christmas album. I'm doing uh, lots of surprises. Mm -hmm. Try to have a little something for everybody, but always the hits. Mm. I got an email from a listener in uh, Germany, mm. and they want to know what's uh, who's zooming who. What's zooming in Aretha Franklin's mind? Who's zooming who? Yeah, who's zooming who? What's zooming mean? Well, right now I don't know anybody who's zooming anybody, <laughs> but uh, not lately anyway. <laughs> There's a few folks out there that are still fooling them, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're funny. I love your music. I love you. You're great. Thank you. <laughs> and I know that you're, you're Whitney Houston's godmother. Mm -hmm. So what's, you know, what can you tell us about her new album? What's going on with that? Well, right now, everything is on the QT. I just can't, can't talk tell me. about it. I can't, can't tell me anything. Not again. even a little secret. Just between you and I. Yeah. No well, one else. When we go off the air, okay. I'll tell you something. <laughs> when we go off. What's the next album for Aretha Franklin? The next After album Christmas uh, would be Aretha a Woman Falling Out of Love, coming out in the spring. What's that album going to be about? And uh, it's just it's it's just a number of uh, different things, some that I wrote, some that my son wrote, some that were written by um, um, two really very, very good writers. I'm trying to think of, uh, of their names right now because it's been a good little while since I addressed that album. And it's kind of been on the back burner. Um, Troy Taylor, and um, he's terrific. He's just absolutely terrific as a writer and producer. Mm. Who who else do you like now these days in music? I mean, when you listen, you say I love Neo. I love the way he writes, and um, uh, I like music. Soul Child. Mm -hmm. I love the way he writes. Great writers and producers as well. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see, who else do I like? Uh, Puffy has done some things that I like. Uh, I like the beat on uh, uh, Ludacris, the beat. Mm -hmm. I like the beat. Right, right. Okay. Um, I'm not speaking of the lyric. I'm just talking about the beat and the rhythm and all of Kanye. that. Kanye. Mm -hmm. Yeah, into. okay. And... Um, <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Who else do I like? I had Estelle on the show, and uh, she was telling me that she takes offense to people like Amy Winehouse being called uh, R&B. Mm, okay, I wouldn't say R uh, Amy Winehouse is R&B. I, mm. I wouldn't say that. Her band is. Mm -hmm. um, her backup group is. <laughs> they get down, down, down. I mean, they get down. Uh, I love the group and these moves and everything they got. They got some cold-blooded moves. Mm. But I wouldn't say she's R&B. Right. Yeah. Right, so. <coughs> Excuse well, me. No, no. You, you have influenced so many people and uh, touched so many different lives in so many different ways. And I counted over 40 albums. That's what I counted. And mm -hmm. that was all that was listed. But there are more albums than that. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, as an artist who's always coming up with ideas, always trying to reinvent yourself, always mm -hmm. coming up with ways to to put something new out and mm, different. That must mm -hmm. be, I mean, one of the biggest challenges you face. Mm -hmm. What are the biggest challenges for you? The biggest challenges for me is trying to figure out what to cook for dinner nightly, you know, just night after night. <laughs> what is it going to be tonight? You don't actually cook you your know, own dinner, do you? Oh, please. I do my own washing, my own cooking, my own ironing, all of that. No. Yeah. So, See, you know, there's something nobody would you know. It's, you know, got, you have to figure, what is it going to be tonight? I did that last night. That's the hardest thing right there. Wow. And your kids. I mean, do you spend a lot of time with the kids? Because I know, mm -hmm. having grown up with Teddy... You know, mm -hmm. he told me that you were always busy. You were always on the road. Cause that's, you, Not you, always, no. Half the time. Mm. Half the time. I always, uh, I made a point of being at home half the time and in concert half the time. And I thought that worked very well for our family. That's great. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's wonderful that you put your family, you know, on a priority. Oh, definitely. Like definitely. And so... Um, Next step for you after this. You got mm -hmm. the new album coming out in the spring. Mm -hmm. And then beyond that, some a flight, international touring. Yes, I'm waiting for a first draft of uh, the autobiography for the movies. I've met with producers and uh, I spent two or three days just talking to them. Mm -hmm. So I'm waiting for the first draft just to see what we have. And hopefully by that time, I will know who's going to play me. 
And a career highlight. Uh huh. What's your career highlight been so far? My career highlight has been, I think, the Congressional Medal of Honor, along with my Grammys. Yeah. Unbelievable. I mean, yes. all the achievements and accolades, a result of your hard work and all your tremendous accomplishments. And you've given us so many great songs and hits and a lot of songs that I'm sure the world will not know mm. that were taken off albums that came out that mm -hmm. you probably have archived somewhere. Mm -hmm. And maybe one day we'll all be lucky enough to hear those songs. Uh -huh. Any surprises along the way for you that you thought, well, you know, I knew you were waiting. I didn't think that song was going to be hit, but there was a uh -huh. huge was uh -huh. there surprises uh -huh. along the way. Uh -huh. Uh, that was fabulous. Uh, George came to Detroit, and we had a really cool time uh, on the set. He's a cool guy. Yeah, my sister just fed, fell head over heels in love with him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, real cool guy. Do you have a favorite song of your collection? All of them are my favorites. They're Think? all my favorites. I don't have any one favorite. No, natural They're all my favorites. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. What a catalog. What a great list of songs. I mean, we're so lucky and honored to have uh, the Queen of Soul here at the Voice of America Thank in uh, D.C. Thank you so much again. What a pleasure it's been to, to speak to you and to meet you, uh, the actual person behind the legend. I mean, I've obviously been trying for so long to get an interview with you through oh, your wow. son, through any means I could, bribery, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and it's an honor to meet you in Thank person you so much. and to, to have an opportunity to have it's you on the show. my pleasure to be with you this afternoon. The Voice of America, I've always heard so much about it, and now here I am. For both of us. Yeah. And I, I wanted to give you a chance to say hi to the troops okay. as well who are tuned in and uh, watching right now, listening. So you just look at okay. the camera and you can say... Hi, guys. Take care of yourselves. We appreciate, and certainly I, I don't speak for everyone, but I do speak for myself, my family, and all of those that I know who really do appreciate uh, the giving of yourselves and the way that you have to, uh, to go and be there for your country. Uh, just stay well, trust in God. Everything will turn out all right. Try God. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, this Christmas, Aretha. Get the yeah. album. Yes, pick up the album at Borders Books exclusively or Walden's Books. It's called This Christmas, and it's my new Christmas album. And you're listening to The Voice of America and watching VOA television, and thank you again for being our thank guest. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, can I get a couple IDs? Sure thing. <clears throat> Uh, thank you so much for doing it, and you guys for being so patient. Okay. If you could just look at a camera, you're watching The Voice of America. I'm Aretha Franklin, you're watching The Voice of America. Hello, I'm Aretha Franklin, and you're watching The Voice of America. Perfect. And one that you're listening to American Gold. This is for radio, not TV, so you don't have to worry about the camera. It's, you're listening to American Gold. Hi, I'm Aretha Franklin, and you're listening to American Gold.